G'day, men. Welcome to Captain Industry with me, Jilly. Today, we're going to be covering belts, 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 pipes, and bottom channel. Yeah, I had to put bottom channel in there somewhere. We're going to be covering all things transportation. Now, during this video, we're going to be covering, you know, simple things like what the quick, different quick operations are. We're also going to be covering, of course, the balances and the sorters. We're also going to be covering, you know, how to get things up and down from the right, right level. And one last thing I'm going to tag in very, very quickly. I'm not a fan of it, but it can be done. How to build a bus. I build a bus in Captain Industry. So we're going to be throwing all that into one video together. So I'm going to ask a couple of things very, very quickly at the start of the video. One, can I borrow a like? I'd like to borrow a like right now. Just get it over and done with. If you're not happy with the video, I'll remind you later on the video. You can have your like back. At the same time, I'm going to remind you guys that this video has no mid-rolls in it. There's no mid-roll ads. We don't get halfway through the video right before the punch line and then i throw in an ad because i don't enjoy them you don't enjoy them the reason i can do that is because this channel is community supported i ask that you guys click the like button click the subscribe button they both definitely help out the channel but i also ask that if you have a spare dollar per month which i'm pretty sure most of us do consider clicking the join button becoming a member of the channel getting early access to videos like this at the same time you can make sure the channel stays ad free because nobody enjoys ads if youtube membership's not your thing there's always patreon over there you can just do 12 months up front over there if, if you choose or just do it monthly Last thing I do want to mention very, very quickly is this chapter's down the bottom. Should you need to come back and refer to the video, you want to jump forward, jump backward, see how I spoke about one thing, there are chapters there just to, you know, refresh your memory. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about our four different types of transports. Obviously, we have the U-shaped uh, conveyor. We're going to call it a belt. Uh, we obviously have the flat version. We have a pipe and we have the molten channel. We'll do a molten channel first because it's boring because there's no upgrades. There's just a molten channel. Uh, the only thing special about a molten channel is it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It has to be at ground level. Why does it have to be ground level? Because if we zoom right the way in, uh, it's in the ground. It's built into the ground. So therefore it hanging up in the air, probably not a good idea. Uh, as for the other three, they all have three tiers. They have the tier one, which moves 60 per 60. They have the tier two, which moves 200 per 60. And they have the tier three that moves 450 per 60. Keep that in mind when you're planning out your builds. Make sure that you have belts that are fast enough, belts, pipes, whatever they have to be, to move the material fast enough. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is our quick operations. So if we have a look down here, we have a whole bunch of buttons. Obviously, if I click a belt and I press the E button, it goes up a level, which is really handy to go over other belts. If we press the Q button, it comes back down to ground level. Really handy for plugging the machines because generally they're at the ground level. Not always, but generally. Uh, next up, we have the control button. The control button is for when you want to build a belt at an angle and, you know, you're not happy with the angle it shows and you want a different angle. Uh, next up is the shift. A shift is really, really helpful and really, really important if you cannot build a belt in a straight line. Hold up your hand. I'm holding up my hand right now. It's there to support those that of us who cannot click in a straight line ever. All right, next up, we have the R button. The R button is actually super helpful if you're trying to build two belts parallel to one another or above one another. If I press the R button uh, and I'm at the right level, that would help. Yep. Yeah. And I'm at the right level. Uh, the belt won't try to connect. So as I drag up the belt, as soon as I press the R button, it just goes right above. Really, really handy. Uh, next one we need to talk about is the F button. The F button is when you're trying to make a nice, neat build and you want to go into this connector over here and the belt's trying to block it off, it's to it's to freaking ignore the connector. I don't care if I'm going to block it off. I realize I'm going to block it off. It's perfectly fine. That's what the F button is for. Just, just freaking ignore the damn thing. Okay. So that is what our quick operations are. And do remember the molten channel has no option to go up and down. It has to stay at flat. Next up, we have, of course, our balances. We have four different balances because we have four different types of transportation. We have the molten balancer. I'm not sure why there's a molten balancer. Please, in the comment section, if you have a need, not a, I chose to use it, but actual need, I need to have a molten balancer, can you tell me what it is? Because so far, I haven't found a reason for a molten balancer. Of course, then we have a pipe balancer. Pipe balancers I've used here, there, and everywhere. Uh, they're very good for prioritizing in or out different feeds. You know, like if you've got water feeding in a nuclear reactor, and you want to make sure you have a backup water system just in case the primary fails, which I promise will never, ever, ever happen. It's never happened to me either. You've got a backup system, you know, that's not on the priority. Uh, again, the priorities are whether it be an in pipe or an out pipe, it'll tell you and then you just click the priority for which one you want. The other thing I do want to mention very quickly is the orientation in that window is the same orientation as the camera. 
super helpful. Um, what we had in uh, alpha and beta worked, it just was not nearly as neat as what we end up with in early access. The devs did a wonderful job. Next thing I want to talk about is, of course, the flat balancer and the U-shaped balancer. Um, again, they're just balancers, same as the pipe balancer. They, they just sort different things. Uh, they do have a couple buttons up here, all the balancers do, for enforce strictly even inputs or outputs. I'm not sure why they're here. Again, in the comment section, please, please, if you have a need for these, can you tell me? Because I'm curious. I, I, I haven't found a need for either of these so far. We also, of course, have the U-shaped sorter and the flat sorter. I'd really love a pipe sorter, but there's no pipe sorter yet. Um, just for those times when I accidentally mix two pipe and two liquids in the same pipe, and I really want to flush the one that's not meant to be in the pipe out of the pipe, yeah, it'd be really handy to have just some sort of sorter. I realize it's very limited use, but oh my god, accidentally joining two pipes together, terrible, terrible things happen. Uh, so I have a nice quick example over here of things in action. I have obviously potatoes and coal. Why are you putting potatoes and coal on the same belt? I don't know, but we have enforced strictly even inputs, which means we're going coal, potato, coal, potato, coal, potato, coal, potato. Uh, at the same time, I'm filtering out coal. Now, these, I can actually filter out multiple items. How many items you choose to filter out, filter out is entirely up to you, but you can filter out as many items as you want. As far as I know, I haven't found a limit so far. All right, next up, let's talk about how to get things up and down from different levels. So obviously at ground level, if you're building a belt uh, and you want to bring a T intersection off it, how many tiles do you need? The answer is, well, technically none, but realistically one, one tile. You need one tile to make a nice intersection. Now, if it's one tile up, how many tiles do we need? And the answer then is three. And I'm going to say three, okay? Um, I'm going to get this out of the way very, very early on the first one. Technically, what is actually happening is it's coming out flat one tile and then takes two tiles to go down one level, okay? Which you'll find repeated over and over. So if we're at height two instead, and I build a belt over the top of this, uh, we don't need three tiles to get down. We now need five tiles to get down. So I'm going to come out one, two, three, four, five, and there we go. Uh, after we get to height three and we build a belt along. Yep, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. Seven tiles to get a belt out. Now, this is the exact same for a flat conveyor as is for a U-shaped conveyor. When it comes to pipes, things get a little bit different. So pipe uh, on the ground, how many tiles do we need? One, one. All right, when we go up to one tile high, uh, how many tiles do we need? Well, the answer is two. We need two tiles. It was three, it's now two. Why? Because pipes are pressure vessels. They don't need to apply the same rules of gravity to make sure things don't slide around on the belts. So they can go up and down a lot steeper than what a uh, belt can. So once we go to th uh, height two, i.e. three tiles up, uh, the, oh, no food, great. All right, uh, the new answer is they can go up and down in three tiles. So we go from one tile to two tiles to three tiles. And then finally, for the biggest belt, uh, the biggest height pipe in the world, whoops, uh, yeah, uh, it's actually four tiles, four tiles. So very, very easy to get pipes up and down, which means in your building in the future, just take this into consideration. Pipes are going to go up and down much easier than belts are. So try and make sure that you do the belts first. The pipes you can probably do afterwards because they're much more willing to work with whatever mistakes that you may have made along the way. All right, so that's going to bring us on to buildings and belts and pipes. Okay, so I have a mixer here. Why do I have a mixer? Well, it happens to have belts at one end and pipes at the other. So it just makes life a little bit easier. So uh, from our... Uh, from our machine at the back, if I want to build this in some sort of bus style or just hook into a belt as quickly and as closely as possible, I cannot obviously, well, I can, it turns out. Does that even work? That does work, yeah. I can connect directly above uh, where the output is, but if I want to have something somewhat neat, from a height one, we need to come off over three tiles. <clears throat> So, well, two tiles. From a height uh, where we are, we're going to come across two tiles to get to that height. As for the pipe itself, uh, the pipe can go, well, right beside. Yeah, the pipe goes right beside because, again, it doesn't have to have the same rules as gravity. It's a pressure vessel. It can go up and down much steeper than what a belt can. Now, when we come to the next example of a height one, two belt, uh, we can connect directly above if you're happy with mess. Otherwise, uh, to get a nice neat connection, we're going to come over 
what's that? One, two, three, four tiles? Four tiles. Um, you can choose to bring a tighter connection and have it a little bit stick out a little bit further, um, but obviously not go as far uh, to left and right. So we're going to drop that there. As for the pipe, uh, the pipe is still, well, one tile. Yeah, pipes are much happier to go up and down than the belts are. All right, so then we have a max height. We're up at height three now, and if I want to go straight up, I technically could. It's a little bit of a mess, but it sort of works. If we want something a little bit neater, if I can hit the right tile, come on. Height three. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. We'll, we'll get there eventually. There we go. As we can see, that's ducking in and underneath the belts, which is technically blocking off you running more belts along. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. As for the pipes, guess how many pipes it is. Go on. Guess, guess. Yep, it's still a one. Um, yes, it does technically block off you running more pipes underneath, but pipes are so much happier to go up and down in the same uh in the same platform in fact you could actually go straight up and probably have a cleaner pipe yeah that's 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 almost nice it's almost nice it's got a lovely squirrel to it you know uh, it sort of reminds me of a corkscrew you know because after you finish fighting with the factory for a couple of hours and probably go through a death spiral you're probably gonna open a bottle of wine okay on to a bus or a bus like system so when it comes to a bus like like system you need to keep some important factors under control and that is going to be mainly where trucks can get through so as you can see i have two belts here with two pipes here and two lots of supports one at either end and to build these you're going to end up copying and pasting this a lot why are you going to build and copy and paste this because if i just build a belt uh, across we're going to see those connectors are going to choose to go wherever those connectors are. Oh, the, the, the supports. The supports are going to go wherever the supports decide that the supports want to go, which is going to come back and haunt you. Trust me, it's going to come back and haunt you time and time again. So to build these, you're going to need to have a nice strip, uh, a nice section set out. And the way you do that is go to height two and drag along as far as required. Uh, go up to height three, turn on arm mode so it doesn't connect, and then have a nice section of two supports that you're going to copy and paste over and over and over to get this system working okay but it is possible to technically make a bus inside uh captive industry whether you're using pipes or belts is entirely semi irrelevant but you're going to want a one tile gap between your machine and your belts okay and then you're going to want a two tile gap between one set of belts and the next set of belts. But we'll get to that in a second. All right. So from our very first slot, we want to come up and we have a couple of options. We can either come up on the rear or if we come up far enough to the left and right, I can come up on the straight. The idea is you want to connect your building preferably between these two sets of pillars. So if I put one here for the first belt and then I come out of the second one and I come here, for the second belt i'm in between those two pillars which means this area here becomes a truck driving zone as does this area here we want to make sure the trucks have maximum amount of transport around the buildings as for the pipes we already know pipes are great they're going to go up pretty much where they are you know there's there's a oh that's beautiful it's wonderful i love it uh pipes are super super special they're happy to go up and down all sorts of different angles Pipes are going to be the easy one whenever it comes to building a bus. Okay, what happens when we go to, well, two pipes with uh, two belts? You know, say we need to get all three items into this particular machine. So we're going to come with our very first one. We're going to go up to height number two. And I need to look for a valid connection. I like this connection. It's a little bit out of the way. It's on the front side, which really doesn't matter. But it's more importantly, it's out of the way. As for the second belt, we're going to come up. And we're going to go to the far right. Again, we're between these two sets of pillars. So we, have, we haven't we have blocked any trucks. As for the third connection, um, we can do wonderful things on the inside. But normally you want to come out a few tiles. And after you've come out a few tiles, you can then make a connection up back to the main bus belt. Or up to the top main bus belt. Okay. You're going to need to make sure you always leave a couple of tiles uh, between one set of builds and the other. And also, of course, you're going to need to leave a good amount of space between the first build and the second build. Because you're going to have extra belts sticking out in the middle here. Can I run that through there? You're going to need to have extra room between one build and the next because you're going to have extra belts sticking out into this section. And also potentially extra belts sticking out the front of this section should you need to put belts into 
this mix. But it does mean that, yes, uh, two sets of belts are pretty much going to take up two sets of tiles, right? Like, it, it's pretty much one belt per, per one large square, you know, when it comes to your know, mining squares and that sort of stuff. So building a bus is technically possible, but I really don't recommend it. I uh, don't recommend it for a number of reasons. One, sheer amount of space it takes up. Two, belt throughput, okay? Your belt throughput starts off at 60, which is sort of enough for the early game, but then as you can continue through the game, you're gonna go up to, you know, a belt throughput of 200, uh, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. 450 is a lot, but it's gonna cost you a lot more power. So that is some quick run through of how to build a bus. Also, how to get belts up and down along with pipes up and down from different levels. And now I'm going to remind you guys that, you know, if you're not happy with the video, not happy with the video at this point, by all means, have your like back. We, we, we've got a couple more things to cover, but, you know, it is a good time to remind you guys that if you're not happy, by all means, have your like back. At the same time, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button already, you probably should because we've got an upcoming video on two upcoming videos on one on uh, farming, another one on food because the farming and food is not a simple topic. Uh, at the same time, I will remind you guys very, very quickly that there is a playlist down in the description for more Captive Industry tutorial videos. So with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about interesting things, interesting things we can do with machines. Uh, and we're going to have two of these guys right beside one another. Now, these are exhaust scrubbers. Whether you've played with them or not has no bearing. What I want to talk about is how I have a connection here and a connection here. This one is going to be for gas. Uh, this one is going to be rather for sulfur. And this one is going to be for uh, CO2. Now, I would love to get belts in and out of here and keep a, the minimum amount of space between one and the other as possible. But as you can see, um, the game does not want to let me do it. So what we can do is we can start with a U-shaped belt and I can run it with F mode on. Yep. Into here. After I've run it into here, I can run another one in from this side, and that gives me a nice little connector in the middle. Uh, what direction that belt's going in? I have no idea. Probably in. Probably in. It's going in. So, uh, if you have two machines, uh, come on, copy. Uh, oh, shop, shop. If we have two machines uh, with belts, if we have two machines with a input okay in an input we want to get into an input we need to run an innie to an outie okay because they are an output and we need to run an in belt to a in uh, into an output okay at the same time i gotta turn on f mode uh, otherwise i cannot for the life of me get that belt to go past those two exhausts because it's going to block them off so we're going to turn on f mode to make that connection happen once we have that connection happening i can actually remove all the belts and the connector will stay Okay, very, very handy if you're trying to squeeze things in between two belts. Next thing we're going to talk about very, very quickly, uh, again, ooh, helps if I don't rotate the damn thing th around three times, is uh, exact same principle uh, when it comes to this machine, is this output 72 carbon dioxide. Now, 72 carbon dioxide is a lot of carbon dioxide. It means that either you need to have two smokestacks, okay, and you need to have a tier two pipe out of the machine into a smokestack and then into another smokestack which is a little bit of a piping hazard and a nightmare to just get all that working together there are other options and the other options is you put a connector directly into the smokestack because connectors technically don't have a speed limit okay they a connector sure A connector for a tier three belt or pipe uh, looks the exact same as a connector for a tier one, okay? They're the exact same item and therefore they have the exact same speed, which is fast, very, very fast. So what we can do, and it's what I've done multiple times in my Let's Play is, rather than try to mess around with silly pipes and all sorts of things, I just build a connector. And we build a connector by joining some pipes together, like so, and it gives me a connector. Connector has an input or an output, whatever it happens to be. And the only way we uh, designate that is it all depends on what you plug into it. So in the case of a smokestack, that is a input only. It only goes into a smokestack, and therefore I don't need this pipe. And then we're gonna put a second smokestack there, and that's gonna give me two smokestacks. Now I have two smokestacks joined by connector. I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna attach them directly to that, which means I have whacked two smokestacks directly beside one another, saved myself a whole bunch of hassles, a whole bunch of effort, and also 
technically probably not in this example because you know we're gonna have a bit of a throughput problem but now i can technically put the next building right beside it also same story if i want to connect this in i could just find an existing connector with an existing belt and we can throw that in there and once we throw that in there and we build everything it's all hunky-dory it's all happy to be built and it'll run perfectly now i've used this for these particular machines often because um the building is very, very tight. Also, another one I've used them for is the cracking unit. No, not the cracking unit. It's the sour water stripper. Sour water stripper. Uh, can I get two of these beside one another? And you need to build them, please. All right. Uh, same story. It's it's a very tight build uh, for some of the pipes. And they're two ins. That's nice and simple. This is two outs. Now, you'd think you'd be able to join a pipe into an out. You can. And then you need to join in from out the other side, which gives you a little connector. And then you can plug in whatever it happens to be, your steam or your sour water, from one pipe into two machines. Very good. Auto balances along the way. As for the other end, we have obviously uh, sulfur, which we're going to bring out this way and then sulfur out this way, which then means I need to get two belts of um, uh, ammonia ammonia uh, out, which then means if I run that to there, I can then not join that to there because it says it's too close to a connector, which means then we need to drag belts, uh, belts and pipes all over the place. We end up with all sorts of dumb looking connections. You know, can we improve that at all? Yeah, it's a little bit better. And then we'd have to bring the pipe out of this. It sort of works, it sort of works, but there's definitely needed ways we can do that. Uh, best, well, way I've been doing it uh, is I just move that out of the way. Once it's out of the way, uh, we can then remove everything in here, everything in here. And you know what? I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put this right here. And we'll whoop, no, copy that to there. Let's put a pipe on here and a pipe on here. That way the connector has something to attach to. And then we're gonna put this above. Now, remember how we had that error about how you can't have a connector up against a connector? That is entirely true if they're the same type of connector. If it's a flat belt connector up against a flat belt connector, that's a no-go. If it's a U-shaped connector up against a U-shaped connector, no-go. If it's a pipe connector up against a pipe connector, no-go. If it's two different types entirely, then the machine works, the machine goes together, all the connectors go together because you can't have uh, your sulfur jump into a pipe, at least not that I've found. Uh, just like the ammonia can't go through the connector and start steaming out the uh u-shaped connector it just doesn't work so yeah copying and pasting different parts around your base very very handy if you want to get into some very very tight builds but it means we can make very very neat builds which is some small modifications by cutting and pasting what we want uh same story goes for these guys if you wanted to run two of them together and you go away we could even put a large smokestack right here and with that built, it means I don't need that little smokestack in the middle. And we can now have you output 75, uh, 72 CO2 and you output 72 CO2 into a connector, which technically has unlimited throughput into a giant smokestack that can remove 600 CO2. Yeah, we can tidy up and neaten up our builds with just a little bit of copy and pasting and pipe and belt manipulation. But that is where we're going to leave it for this video. If you found the video helpful, by all means, click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to do so. At the same time, I am going to remind you that, you know, if you enjoyed the fact that the video had no ad rolls, consider becoming a YouTube member. Consider throwing a dollar a month behind the channel. It very, very much helps if all a thousand plus people that watch the video threw a dollar at the channel every month. We'd be fine. We'd be fine. I'd never have to worry about running ads ever again. Anyway, with all that said, I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the very next video. Probably on farms. Probably on farms. Anyway, that's it. We're out. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye.